was that the person that asked for Mill to be sacked wasn't Margaret Thatcher, because the BBC had been doing films which were critical of Thatcher and the Thatcher government, um, several really good films. Maggie's Militant Tendency, uh, Panorama, where they showed the far right as Tory MP. So the BBC was independent-minded back in the mid-80s. Uh, so that then, but the, the person that did it was Victor Rothschild. Victor Rothschild, uh, he, uh, he said, he, uh, he, he actually asked Marmaduke Hussey, who was the chairman of the BBC, can you sack the director general? And that, Hussey put that in his autobiography. Uh, so the, person, the impetus was coming from Victor Rothschild, who at the time was still affiliated with MI6. During the Second World War, he was uh, MI5. So why is Victor Rothschild getting involved in trying to sack the director general of the BBC? Well, you go back to the previous year and you find the BBC giving quite a negative coverage to Victor Rothschild being outed as a Soviet spy. Uh, this is after Peter Wright's sky, spy capture book. And uh, there was a big hoo-ha about, oh, maybe uh, Victor Rothschild was actually working for the Soviets all the way through the World War II and the Cold War. And so that, I thought, was, you know, and of course he was. He was the fifth man after Burgess, McLean, Philby and Blunt. But Victor Rothschild didn't go to the Soviet embassy with all these secrets. He gave them to Blunt to take to the Soviet embassy. And all this was revealed uh, by Roland Perry, uh, an Australian journalist, uh, so what you've got here is you've got an establishment which is way above uh, the national interests or national security. So although we were friendly with the Russians during World War II, obviously, and it wasn't such a bad thing that Victor was passing all these secrets to the Russians, when it came to the Cold War, uh, it was another story, really. You know, he should have been locked up, uh, but he wasn't. And so there is this sort of aloofness of a whole establishment which is way above the nat national interest. Uh, and if we go back uh, to a, another important date in the history of Israel, the reason I talk about Victor is because he had played a very big role in 1948 uh, in getting the Soviet Union behind the vote for the creation of the State of Israel because there were all sorts of problems at the UN getting people to actually vote for the creation of the Israeli state. Uh, and Victor Rothschild did that job of getting the Soviet votes behind, as Roland Perry explains in his book, the fifth man. And on the other side of the Atlantic is, guess who? It's Nelson Rockefeller. Now, he worked for something called, he'd been uh, uh, working at the State Department, something called the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs at the State Department. So that's the CCIA, uh, is Nelson Rockefeller. And he managed to get, through various bribery and this sort of thing, all of the South American countries to vote for the creation of the Israeli state. So these two, in 1948, were very important in, man in, in actually making... I mean, can you imagine the Soviet Union in 1948 knew that this...